Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. This is Think Design Stories. In this series, we will be going behind the scenes on one of the most iconic laptop brands ever conceived and is still going strong. Today I am joined by David Hill, who started with IBM in 1985 and was with them until May 2005 when the IBM ThinkPad division was purchased by Lenovo. Since then, David has held several positions between those two companies, including the Executive Director of Design, the Vice President of Corporate Identity and Design, and the Chief Design Officer and Vice President of Experience Design. When it comes to ThinkPads, there are few people that know more than he does. Over the years, computers have taken many shapes and forms and places within the household. David and I got into a conversation over a Twitter post that he made earlier last year where it showed a proper computer desk. Today, we spend some time talking about computers, furniture, and the home. On your design of the day on Twitter, had that amazing uh, desk setup that was designed for a computer. And that just blew me away because... I see a lot of computer desks. I have a lot of computer desks, but all they really are is flat pieces of MDF for wood. Some of them have the really old pull-out keyboard tray, which I I think is kind of out of fashion now. Um, But beyond that, there's really nothing that defines most computer desks as actual computer desks from a regular old office desk. It's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting thing. You know, when we were working on kind of revamping the desktop computers and such uh, back in the mid nineties, one of the things we were very focused on was um, IBM had a brand called Aptiva, which was their sort of consumer brand. And, and we were, you know, trying to get into the home via retail and, uh, sales environments and such. And so we wanted to you know, really think about where do people put these things? What do they do with them? And a computer really kind of invaded the home. No one knew what to do with it. They, uh, you know, everybody at that time, generally people have rooms for certain things. You know, they, have a, they have a dining room, they have a bedroom, they have a bathroom, they have a kitchen. Um, at that time, very few people had a home office or a computer room. Uh, and they, they, they'd have a room, like a living room or the TV watching room or whatever you want to call it. But uh, there, there really wasn't much of anything in terms of you know, where do people put their computers. And in fact, we, we did some research and had people uh, take pictures, you know, like Polaroids or, or whatever uh, of their homes. And we quickly found out that no one really had anywhere specifically designated for this. And so these cottage industries started popping up of uh, cheapo, you know, PC furniture. And then were stuff that you would buy like at a discount store and you know, take it home and it was made in a particle board with fake wood grain and lousy screws that stripped out. And you know, if your cat stood on it, it might fall over like a house of cards. And these things started springing up. They were awful. And you know, you would go in someone's house, they might like have it sucked over in the in the dining room or wherever they had it, because they, they really didn't know what to do with it. And then you started seeing people, or, or you, you, if you went on a new home tour or something like that, you would start to see, and as a computer room, you know, they, they started building houses with a computer room. In fact, uh, the house that, that we live in uh, and designed, it has a computer room because we, we built it in, in uh, 1995. And uh, we thought, well, we should have this 
computer, or the way our house is designed, that our two boys' bedrooms are upstairs, kind of a loft, and between them is this loft area, and there's a computer area there, and they loved it. But over time, it got to be where, well, why do you need a room for a computer? Because you don't really have to go to the computer. The computer can go with you. <laughs> so it's, it's changed a lot. Uh, some people don't even have printers anymore. Uh, they, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really changed. It, it, it kind of reminds me, I've talked about this a little bit, it reminds me a little bit about the evolution of uh, telling time. If you go back and look at how did people know what time it was? Uh, centuries ago, you would walk to the town square and it would be a clock. And the clock would probably have bells or something that would ring on the hours. And, but you, you would go to the clock. You didn't have a clock. <laughs> Nobody could afford a clock, right? And then they figured out ways to make clocks smaller. So people would buy a clock. And the clock would was large, maybe like a mantle clock or a grandfather clock or something like this, because miniaturizing the mechanism, I mean, to go from a clock in the bell tower of a church or something, to, you know, putting it on your mantle, that's a quantum leap in scale. Uh, and then, you know, so that it was like a room you could go into uh, to see what time it was. It's kind of like a computer, I think. And then, you know, the next big evolution was like the uh, the pocket watch, and you could you could put it in your pocket, um, which is not so unlike a, a smartphone. And then from there, you could they figured out a way to make it even smaller. You could put it on your wrist, and you know we have computers now, obviously, that you can you can wear on your wrist. It's there's a lot of similarities, I think. And, you know, if you just make that comparison, you know, the, the bell tower clock is like, uh, like a mainframe. You know, so if you wanted a computer, you get in your car and you drive to the computer center. And, you know, maybe, maybe if you had access, you could take your stack of punch cards, run some crazy Fortran program through it or something. But it's, it's, there's some parallels there. But your, your requirement to have all this support uh, furniture and things like that. I think it's changed a lot. I mean, you don't see anywhere near as much custom furniture for computers anymore. And, and if you do, a lot of it has to do with wire management, although wires are becoming less and less, it seems like. There's still people talk about wire management. You can buy these boxes from the floor and stuff all your AC adapters in. Just people still have AC adapters. You can charge these things somehow. But, you know, and uh, Richard Sapper designed a, uh, a computer uh, piece of furniture. It's like a secretary. Yeah, it has a round top. It's on his website. It has a really cool big red gear that when you open the, the lid, the front to this thing, the timbre door goes up. It's all out of magic. It's very cool. But, you know, I, I think it came out a little bit. It, I think it missed the wave. Uh, but it's a very cool object. I don't know anybody that actually has one, but it's just, I think it's just changed a lot. And most people who have, who work on computers, it seems like they have a lot of monitors. They use monitor arms a lot, which Zapper designed a beautiful one for uh, Noel. And they have big, expansive workspaces, a big, as big a flat area as you can possibly get. And yet, you know, you mentioned the computer drawer. I think that is completely passe. I, I don't know anybody who puts a, a uh, keyboard in a drawer anymore. That's, that's dinosaur furniture. But yeah. we, we've pretty much got our, our quote computer room now is, uh, is a desk, uh, which you can sit at with your, uh, with your laptop. And we do still have printer although it rarely gets used no, it's, it's the same here i haven't bought ink in years and i think i went to use it and it was all dried up and it's like oh well 
whatever. Yeah, the last time I used ours, I had to do a nozzle clean on it. I think it pushed like half of the uh, cartridges through the nozzles to clean it out. Uh, I think I think I could disconnect it and probably never really. Use it. Maybe maybe one day I'll uh, replace this desk because this thing is so antiquated. It not only has a keyboard drawer, David, but there's a little pull-out piece for the mouse. <laughs> like it's you, you pull out the drawer and then you reach underneath and you pull out this little piece of yeah, it's uh, yeah. Um, it, it's pretty rubbish. <laughs> yeah, I we I, I just don't I don't even use an external monitor. I used to for years in my office. I, I've never used it. A desktop computer in my office my entire career. I've always had a ThinkPad on my desk. I used to use uh, docking stations so that I could get a bigger screen. But as these ThinkPads got bigger and the screens got bigger, I was like, what do I need this thing for? And then pretty soon I found myself, you know, I didn't use anything external. I just used the, the ThinkPad itself. The only thing I really needed was a was a cord plug it in to charge it. Yeah, I kind of feel sorry for some of these industries that sprang up making all this computer furniture. I mean, you can still buy some, a lot of stand up desks and things like that, or have elevation change ability, which I think has some value. But, you know, I have to laugh. My desk that I'm using right now is my drafting table that I've had for 40 years. <laughs> hmm. And you can change the height of it, you can change the angle of it. And I still draw stuff on it occasionally. What what is old is new, as they say. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. You like it because it's just got a big flat surface. That's what you really need in a lot of it, ways. It really is. That's what Sapper had. Also, Sapper never had any kind of real computer desk. Uh, he had a he had a large, fairly large, maybe about five feet square, a square table that he designed. Uh, and on it was all kinds of stuff, including his ThinkPad and a Tizio lamp, a bunch of uh, a bunch of half uh, half completed study models. But the bigger, the more space there was, the better it was. You know, just wide open, flat, expansive space. Yep, it's the way to do it. Flat space yeah, is always yeah. useful. I think so. There's been a lot of changes in offices, you know, with the uh, like bench seating and things like that. Some people really like it, some people don't, but I don't really know what's going on in the world with that right now because a lot of people aren't going to the office. That's true. Yeah. So the home office really has become a big deal. You know, there's a lot of houses, at least in the United States, that used to have like a formal living room and a more informal living room. A lot of people are converting the formal living room into home offices uh, and things like that. I think a home office is great. I mean, I, I have one. This is what I'm in right now. Yep. That's, uh, that's where I am too. It's uh, got two computer desks and, uh, <laughs> and then the computers that go on them. Yeah, I got my drafting table and a flat file, which I have lots of drawings and, and uh, various kind of art sort of materials and books. Uh, reference books about design and such things I sort of like in here and that's that's really it really it's just a place that I can go to work on something.